As of 2015, the UK has the fifth largest economy in the world. The fifth. But we live in a time where many young, mainly working class people, believe that we are, in fact, a poor country. We have a trillion pound debt, an economy that works for the few, and a dividing line that many people cannot, or quite possibly choose not, to see. We live in a time of mixed messages, of mixed signals that nobody is willing to question. The populace is constantly being told how strong our economy is, how there are less unemployed, more back in work, and how the UK is a world leader in job growth and prosperity. But since 2008, we have seen constant austerity, public spending cuts, tax rises, an NHS on the brink of collapse, zero hour contracts, less people earning a living wage and a rise in homelessness. How can we be better off, but worse at the same time? It doesn't make any sense. Brexit is the tip of the iceberg, the crescendo of events that we as a people have had to endure in the last 10 years. But how did we get here and why does it feel so wrong? We all know the story by now. The financial crisis started when unregulated, greedy bankers played Russian roulette on the stock exchange. After the banks collapsed in 2008, of which many were part nationalised in order to guarantee that ordinary people and businesses would not lose their money, bankers seemed to act as though their actions were without consequence, while the country was in the midst of a deep recession. In order to stimulate the economy, the Bank of England issued the policy quantitative of easing. Through this policy, the Bank of England would pump £375 billion between 2009 and 2012 into the banks in order to kickstart the economy. In theory, this would allow the banks to start to trade and lend with the stimulus trickling down to the ordinary people at the bottom. However, as the banks were bailed out, VAT rose to 20%, council tax rose, petrol prices rose, the cost of living would rise whilst interest rates shrank to their lowest and pensions began to plummet. Many ordinary people could not make ends meet, struggling to obtain credit despite quantitative of easing, as many lost their jobs or had to take forced pay cuts and pay freezes, many of which are still in effect today. Many people during this time lost their houses as they could no longer pay their mortgages, the Conservatives and Lib Dems would form a coalition government in 2010 on the back of the slogan that we were all in this together. How wrong they were. The Conservatives and Lib Dems said they had to make tough decisions, that they had to cut public spending in order to balance the books. They would cut council funding, they would raise tuition fees, the NHS would be grossly underfunded, they would make cuts to all frontline services that impacted everybody. Many of the sick and disabled would be hounded by the Department of Work and Pensions and be wrongly declared fit for work. Bedroom tax and the rise of food banks. People who worked, could not afford to feed their families, would use church or charity led food banks in order to stay alive. Austerity was the only diet we would live by, the only thing guaranteed to be on the menu. In 2005, the national debt was 0.5 trillion. Today, the national debt is 1.64 trillion. It has all been for nothing. Schools, the NHS, social care, your local council, the police, the fire service, the forces have all had their funding cut but the national debt has risen. The national debt has not been cut as the government promised in 2010. The economy is strong, so they say, but the rising homelessness, the tripling of the national debt and the freezing wages do not reflect this. So which is it, and who is to blame? The immigrants and Europe are the sections who have the finger pointed at the most, because it is part of an agenda from certain corners of the press. The papers print that the immigrants come here and take all our jobs, that we will be all right if we could govern ourselves, that Europe are to blame for a culture of political correctness, and that they tell you what to do. If only someone could put the great back in Great Britain again. Many of their readers believe this message because things aren't going well. 
they look around their towns and they see that it is getting worse, that they are worse off and the papers have created a ready-made enemy. Poverty porn and scroungers, they should be made to work is another message I hear all too often. But collecting the sick and disabled and forcing them to do a job that they are physically and mentally unequipped for is wrong. Many lives have been taken through suicide, many have died through illness after being declared fit for work and many people have suffered under this government who along with the media have channeled frustration and anger at the most vulnerable in our society. But the bankers, they got off scot-free. It was actually them who created this mess, but they don't seem to want to clean it up. They are free of the blame. The papers don't point the finger at them. But don't worry, we've got our green and pleasant land. Wrong. The government are selling it by the pound, hand over fist to the highest bidder. Fracking the land, ruining the landscape, the wildlife and local communities. Will the politicians listen to protest, to genuine health and safety concerns, to a local council who already refused permission to frack? No. They grant permission despite the protest and health warnings, giving away the land in the name of profit. MPs no longer reflect the will of the people. The current incumbent are a collection of faceless, self-serving, career-protecting, ladder-climbing snakes who have no life experience in the world outside of London. London. The bubble. It lives in its own dream. The jobs, the wealth didn't leave that town like they did in the Midlands, the North, Wales, Scotland and Northern Ireland. It's no wonder they voted to stay. But this is why we don't trust politicians anymore. They were caught with their hand in the till, fiddling expenses. If that was you or I, the plebs, we'd face jail. Time inside to reflect upon our misgivings, our fraud, our theft. But they carry on and are still being caught at it today. You no longer reflect the will of the people. You no longer speak for the people. You no longer represent the people. It is no wonder that the last general election was the least attended. It doesn't matter who you vote for. They're all the same. It is one rule for us and one rule for them. We are all in this together. So how come my taxes have gone up when Starbucks, Amazon, Apple, Facebook, eBay and many more multinational companies don't have to pay their share? When the Prime Minister's father is caught with his earnings offshore? When privileged celebrities are caught paying little to no tax but the family across the street who watch that celeb host their favourite TV programme can't afford to live and have to queue at a food bank. It seems that there are no consequences for the chosen few. We didn't create this mess, but it is all of us who are paying the price. And the government? They keep spending. 205 billion on nuclear weapons that will never be fired. 7 billion to refurbish the Houses of Parliament. 369 million to refurbish Buckingham Palace, 90 billion on a high speed train line, and 12 billion per year on foreign aid. Try telling a working family at a food bank that foreign aid is in their best interest. Can Remain voters blame the rest of the UK for voting for Brexit? I didn't want to leave, but I will not blame the ones who did, for they wanted change. They wanted hope. For when they look around, they see that their children will be worse off than them. They see the NHS and other services being privatised. They see the draining of public money into private pockets. They see globalisation fail them. They voted, out of desperation, but they voted, because regentrification missed their inner city or former industrial town. They used their vote as an opportunity to finally say that I am not a number. I am a person and I will be ignored no longer. I just wish they would engage and continue to have their say. Not out of protest, but out of a willingness for change, a better world and to say that we all matter. We will not be led by the blind anymore. We will not be lied to and big business, the financial sector and the political class, there are consequences for your actions. 
it doesn't really matter if you voted leave or remain. We were all conned. We were all directing our frustrations out on each other. For it is our leaders who hold all the cards and not the person in the street. It is now time to say that we will no longer be beat. Save our NHS. No to Trident. Abolish bedroom tax. Stop persecuting the sick and disabled. Protect pensions. No to grammar schools. No to academies. No to privatisation of care homes, healthcare, schools. To cash for honours. To zero hour contracts. To tax avoidance. To fracking. To the climate change denying. To division. To persecution to outpricing of education, to work capability assessments, to ATOS, to financial waste, to fossil fuels, to HS2, to raising train fares above inflation, to childcare fees, to war, to disregarding forces veterans, to food banks and to the homeless begging in the street. <laughs>